welcome to the Life Pro Podcast, where today I have the pleasure of having Kevin Palmi- Palmieri. Uh, I promised I wouldn't butcher that, but here we go. <laughs> He's the founder and host of Next Level University, which I love the name. And today's topic is confidence, which is you know something that I struggle with as a child and I developed, and it's also helping me through my podcast. I'm excited to talk about that. But before we get into it, Kevin, how are you doing today? I am doing very well, Omid. I appreciate you having me. Again, I've done enough podcasts where my name gets butchered often, so it is what it is, and it's just par for the course, my friend. I love it. Why don't you start on? Tell us more about you, yourself and your journey. Yeah, so today I am the host of Next Level University, and thank you for the kind words about the title. We are a self-improvement podcast that does an episode every day. So we do seven episodes a week. We just crossed 1,346 episodes or something like that. Below the podcast, we have a business, so we get to do this every day for a living, which is truly wonderful. But I started very humbly with a mom and grandmother who raised me. I didn't know my dad. I didn't meet my dad until I was 27. And I tried many different things, many different jobs, many different careers, but I ended up falling into podcasting for lack of better terms. And that was 2017. And everything has just kind of been grow the mission, grow the podcast, grow the business since then. Great. So, to, you know, one of the things that intrigued me about your story when I read your profile uh, was, I guess there was a point in your life where, you know, you had it all, you had the hot girlfriend, you had the great job, um, and then something changed. Can you kind of get into that a little bit? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So when I was 25, I had a high paying job. So I was in an industry called weatherization. So we would go into usually large state or government owned buildings. And it was my job as a foreman to make those buildings more energy efficient. So I had that. My girlfriend at the time was a model. Uh, I had a sports car. We had just gotten an apartment together. And to top it off, Omid, I had just won a bodybuilding show. So I was in the best shape of my life. I had health, wealth, and love, or at least that's what it looked like from the outside looking in. My girlfriend came to me one day and said, hey, I want to move from New Hampshire to California and I want to chase my dreams. Mm -hmm. And I was so scarce and I was so afraid of my own shadow that I just could not pour into her cup. I just was unable to support her. She ended up leaving me as she should have. And that started the conversation in my mind of, okay, I don't really like who I am. What am I supposed to do with all this? I said, I'm just going to go make more money. That was my big mistake is, well, if I make more money, a lot of my problems will probably just disappear. So the next year I grinded my face off and I lived on the road for 10 months basically because most of our contracts were in other states. So I pretty much lived in a hotel for 10 months. I ended up making $100,000 that year. But I remember very similarly to where it looked like I was crushing it, but I felt completely different. I opened my final pay stub that year to see that I made my goal but I wasn't any more confident. I wasn't any more secure. I wasn't any more certain of my future. And I realized that for most of my life, especially that year, I had lived unconsciously. The opposite of unconscious is hyperconscious. So I started a podcast called the Hyperconscious Podcast shortly after. I fell in love with podcasting. If you can't tell, it's, it's one of my favorite things in the world. As I fell out of love with my job, I don't want to do this job anymore because I know what it takes to achieve the level of success I want. I'm not willing to do it again. So I start calling out of work. I start leaving the job site early. I start showing up late. And it just kept getting worse and worse where I'd be packing up my stuff and I'd be having anxiety and you know I'm, having, I'm dealing with depression and all this stuff. And eventually the whisper became a scream. I was in New Jersey, which is six hours from where I lived at the time. My alarm clock went off at 5.15, sat up, slid to the edge of the bed as I have done this a thousand times, lacing up my work boots. But that morning, it was like there was 10 televisions on in my head at the same time, and every single one is on a different station. And one is saying, you're stuck here forever. People like you don't get opportunities like this. Never mind, leave them behind. If you do work up the courage to leave, what will your friends say? What will your family say? And what are you going to do with your life? You have no backup plan. This is plan A through Z. You got nothing else. So in that moment, I felt that if I was to take my life, I would take my problems with me. And that was the darkest rock bottom basement moment I've ever experienced. Very blessed that I have a wonderful friend who is now a business partner, Alan. I reached out to Alan. I said, hey, man, 
uh, can I tell you something? I'm, I'm kind of struggling. And he said, yeah. yeah. And we had a conversation and in his wisdom, he said, Kev, over the last few years, your awareness has changed a ton, but your environments have remained the same. I think it's time for you to change your environment. So three or four months later, I, I ended up leaving that job and going full time into being a very broke entrepreneur, very broke podcaster, trying to figure out what does all this mean and how do we how do we become successful? Right. Do you I mean, I've had probably two instances in my life where I feel like I've hit rock bottom and, you know, depending depending on the stages of your life, that might feel a little bit different. Right. Mm. Um do you think it's normal for, for all of us or at some point, like everybody to like kind of feel that whether it's at a young age or does everybody at some point hit rock bottom? It's a great question. I think it's kind of, it's probably a, a sliding scale, right? It's personal. What, what yep. somebody's rock bottom is to me. Cause here's the thing we've interviewed people who that's nothing. And that is nothing. We, we interviewed somebody who, when he was a child, he was forced to lick the shoes of people until his tongue bled. And he was locked in a cage with uh, with chickens and they'd open the cage and he would have to catch a chicken in order to eat that night. So right. his rock bottom compared to that, yeah, you know, it's probably mostly uphill. So I think we all have resistance. The level of resistance, I think, depends on how tuned in we are to ourselves. And then there's so many external things that can happen. So I don't know if I would say everybody has a rock bottom. I do think everybody has the opportunity for a wake up moment. And that's oftentimes yeah. what rock bottom is, right? Yeah. I had my quarter life crisis at 26. So I got all things considered very lucky where other people might not have that until they're in their fifties, you know, forties, fifties, sixties. Yeah. Yeah. So do you think, I mean, is there a direct correlation between our topic today, which is confidence mm -hmm. and hitting rock bottom? Is the definition of rock bottom losing all of your confidence and all of your hope in life? I think the second part, yeah. I The, the thing that I, I really connect to now more than ever is when you don't have hope, it doesn't feel like there's purpose to continue. Right. So- I don't know if I ever had confidence. I mean, honestly, I looked very confident, but I think I worked really hard to look confident more so than be confident. Right. And the, the reason I like talking about confidence so much is because I still struggle with it. But people see me in this form where yeah. I've done this 2,000 times. I could do this with my eyes closed. doesn't necessarily mean I'm confident when I go to the grocery store or whatever it may be. I still do deal with this to some degree. So I think rock bottom is... When your reality gets put on its head, everything you thought was is not, and you find it very hard to locate hope in that. Yeah. yeah that's what I would say. When it's a reality shifting event where you start to say, I don't, I don't know if I can move forward based on what I'm dealing with today. And when hope exits, I think a lot of other things do too. How, how do you, how would you define confidence? What, is, what does that even mean to you? Hmm. I would say the, Probably the ability to figure something out and deal with the emotions of the discomfort of figuring something out. So just as an anal or just as an example, I'm sure you've met people who it's like, hey, we're going to play a game today. And they'll say like, I've never played the game, but whatever, it's going to be fine. I'm totally fine with it. Their ability to imagine themselves figuring out is, is pretty high. Where I do not do well I do now better than ever, but one of my struggles was uncertainty. Uncertainty because I don't know, I'm not confident that I'm going to be able to figure it out right. in real time. So I think confidence is your ability to understand that I can figure it out and to deal with the emotions surrounding figuring it out. That's what I would say. That's the best, that's the best course of definition I can offer. And the reason I say that is because the people who seem the most confident are usually the ones who are just willing to fail most. So it's almost like they understand yeah. that's kind of where I'm going to figure it out. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. I, I would say the origin of low confidence is the fear of failure. I would, I would say that, and this is what happens. So most, and just studying humans, and especially myself, studying myself, this is what I've seen. Most people look to the most recent and relevant information. So next time you do an introduction, you're going to have one of two thoughts. You're going to say, ah, last time I kind of pronounced Kevin's name wrong. I want to make sure that doesn't happen again. Or 
you're going to not ever podcast again because you don't want to pronounce somebody's name wrong. Right. And if you look at the most recent and relevant proof of, well, last time I, I did it wrong, I'm not going to do it again. Your podcast dies and you're going to lose confidence. Right. A lot of us, we have that, that issue where we say, I'd really like to do blank. I'd really like to raise my hand and ask a question, but uh, I don't feel like I can do it. Therefore, I don't do it. Therefore, my, my next recent and relevant proof is I didn't do it and I kind of stayed safe. So action is action's the cure-all. But the hard part and the way the world and the universe and life is set up is the hard part's usually the necessary part. So yeah, I think the lack of action locks in and ratchets down. I am not confident, therefore I cannot do. And then that continues the cycle. And eventually, hopefully something, hopefully something happens where you have an opportunity to step out of that. Right, yeah. not necessarily a rock bottom moment, but you you need action and you need some form of necessity for action. Yeah. So on on a on a macro level, how important do you you know how important do you factor in confidence in the success of life, whether it's your career, your relationship, your podcast? Yeah. How important is confidence in all those things? It's one of the one of the most important things in the world because if you believe in something, you are roughly 100% more likely to try it. Right. Right. And if you don't try it, you're not going to get any result. And if you don't get a result, you're going to convince yourself that you never could have. And then it's just this, this spiral. The, the most confident people I've seen are, this is a good, good example of this. I knew this guy once and he wasn't that good looking. He wasn't that charismatic. He wasn't that, he wasn't anything super shiny or to write home about, but he always dated very beautiful women. And I was like, I don't understand this. I have no idea why this is happening. He also approached a ton of beautiful women. That's why. He was yep. confident enough to say, well, you know, two out of 100 is pretty good, so I'm going to take my chances. The confidence, I think, the aspect of it that a lot of us are not understanding is you're not necessarily going to win more. You're actually going to lose more. But you're going to take more chances, so the losses eventually will turn into wins. I think that really is what it is because I don't know if you can really last the long, the long tail of success without confidence, because here's right. the thing. Okay. Say you do achieve a level of success and then 15, 20, 25 years later, you're going to start to question if you even deserve it because you're not going to be confident in how you got it. So I really think it's the cheat code. And I think yeah, social media makes it so hard to tell who's confident, who's not, and how you should feel about yourself. There's a, there's a lot of layers to it. Now, do you, I mean, what, what do you, what, what's the process in a gauging your level of confidence? Like, do you really have to be kind of cautious, conscious of your confidence level in order to be able to improve it? I mean, how, how do you, what do you, what do you, how do you deal with that with your clients? Yeah. I, I usually say like, let's talk about your comfort zone. So I think of it from comfort zone, learning zone and anxiety zone. The comfort zone is like, where, where are you confident? Right, you might be confident at home in a certain situation because you know the outcomes that you're going to accomplish. It's, it's fine; everything's yeah. good there. Where is the learning zone? Where you're just outside of your comfort zone, where things mm. could go wrong, but they're not going to they're not going to go horribly wrong. The anxiety zone is where you're holding your breath and you cannot live. You cannot live there for long periods of time. If you do, some sort of damage is done. I try to check in on that. Where where are you the most confident? And they'll say, "I'm the most confident here." Why? Mm. Uh, well, you know, I've been a parent for 26 years. Interesting. How did you feel about being a parent in the beginning? Oh, I had no idea what was going on. Okay. Yeah. How'd you figure it out? Well, I tried and I failed. Oh, interesting. Okay. So I ask a lot of questions. I like to ask a lot of questions because usually if I can ask you a question you've never asked yourself, you'll receive an answer you've never given. Yeah. That's how I tend to do it. At this point, a lot of it is intuitive because you can sort of tell when you talk to somebody you can kind of tell based on the words they use and you can tell by their energy and the questions they ask how confident they actually are. Because here's the thing. We, so we have a Facebook group and one of the questions used to be on a scale of one to 10, how confident are you? And I remember some people would put 10 and I remember saying, I know you, there's no way you're a 10. Right. Other people would put zero. But what they didn't understand is it takes a level of confidence to admit to the fact that you're a zero. So I don't know if anybody actually knows how confident they are. Right. So a lot of it is the, the intuition and seeing how people actually act in certain situations. Yeah. 
you're absolutely right because it's it's like a whole package right it's not only your it's not only your what you say it's how you say it your body language and then your level of willing to take a risk and be mm. able to go out like in your in this instance of your friend it's like well you know he had no fear going and uh talking to all those women and then then he had to turn on the charm so it was kind of mm. like you know the guts to go up, up to them and then actually knowing what to say to captivate them and and yeah. and get them interested um so going back to ways to improve your confidence like how do we how do we you know if i'm not a confident person what do i do to to break that mm -hmm. barrier and build my confidence one of the things that has helped me tremendously that i never would have guessed is learning it learning the more you know information. yeah information is certainty yeah yeah so just as an example and again, confidence is a very, very layered thing, but I don't like planes. I'm not a fan. Doesn't make any sense how something that heavy and metal can fly through the sky at such a high rate of speed so safely. I don't believe it. Doesn't make any sense. What do I do when I'm having moments of fear? I research. What are the odds of being in a plane crash? It's astronomically low, right? It's very, 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 very low. I look for certainty. I look for data. I look for certainty. I think that level of you going out and saying, I'm going to learn something new today. I feel like I'm pouring into myself. I'm becoming more valuable. If we were to talk about arrogance, what is arrogance? Arrogance is acting like you have something when you don't have the competence to actually get it. Right? It's, it's acting like you know everything when you don't know anything. Lack of confidence is probably the opposite, where you know a lot more than you give yourself credit for, but you don't believe you do. So I think it's that balance of learning as much as you can and then having the positive self-talk and the self-worth to actually admit that. So anytime I talk about self-belief, confidence, I like to throw in self-belief and self-worth are more connected than I think people realize. Because when you don't value yourself as a human being, that also is most likely going to hurt your self-belief and your self-confidence. So- what I like to do, the simplest form, is give me something you're afraid of. Whatever it is, climbing a mountain, writing music, public speaking, cool, whatever it is, cool. And then I'm going to divide that thing by 20. So instead of thinking about, I'm not confident as a public speaker, I don't care, what's the least scary thing you can do today? Not the biggest. I don't care about big, hairy, audacious goals. If you don't have confidence, those are going to scare the hell out of you, and you're never going to start. What is the smallest thing you can do? What is the smallest piece of the recipe that we can put in? That's how I help people build confidence. It's, I know what you've been told. You've been told you have to take massive action. And if it doesn't scare you, it's not big enough. I think that's wrong. I think the people who tell us that are the people who have 10 out of 10 belief in themselves. And they don't really understand what it's like not to believe in themselves. So they just say, look, anything is possible. Get out there and fail. Go, re go get rejected a hundred times. I don't think that's the answer. So yeah, for me, it's take something large and break it into bite-sized pieces and then do one thing at a time and then see how you feel after each one. Yeah. And that's absolutely, you know, I completely agree with that. You know, anything in life that's worth getting takes time. Uh, it's a process. Mm -hmm. And what we've learned from, you know, all of my podcasts is, you know, just, just if you can do one thing to just better yourself every day, you keep improving every day, even if it's a little, even one step, yeah. eventually, you know, you'll get there. Um, so I think that that's a, that's a huge obstacle for people because they see that mountain they have to climb and they don't realize that you don't have to get there tomorrow. It could take years. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Uh, as long as you're progressing, uh, you're, you're, you're successful in life. Direction uh, so, over speed. Oh me direction yeah, over speed. That's absolutely. It. Absolutely. And building, you know, and, and building confidence is under your control and it's something that you can do. Definitely. for yourself. And, uh, and the, you know, I always think of the quote, you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. So mm -hmm. if you don't have the confidence to kind of reach for your goals, uh, you're never going to get them because people expect, I think a lot of people expect things to be handed to them on a platter and it just doesn't happen that way. You have well, to the, position sorry. yourself for it. The, the other hard thing. And I think this is why we were talking about rock bottom. I assumed all of the external things were going to make me feel better internally. Yeah. And that made it, it didn't make it worse, but it almost was like, all right, model girlfriend. That's a key that should open this door. No, that ain't it. Okay. You know, six-figure income. Uh, no, that didn't do it. Body of my dreams. No, that didn't do it. All of them. Ah, uh, no, that didn't do it. I, I think 
that's a very hard hit when you realize yeah. external things only bring so much confidence. Yeah. Right. And and that's what a lot of us are after. And we don't understand that confidence is an inner thing. It's a right. knowing, it's a certainty, it's a trust. There's it, but it's very hard to understand and recognize true confidence because I don't know if anybody, I think there's, it's a, it's a scale, right? It's a sliding scale. It's, it's yeah. a spectrum and it's just very hard to figure out where you fit and then make sure you don't become arrogant because you right. can, you can become arrogant, right? I don't know if there's any, any such thing as like having high confidence. I think it's accurate confidence. You want accurate confidence and accurate self-worth based on who you are as a human being. Yeah. Where is that line? Where is that line between confidence and arrogance? I and think, it, and is arrogance very bad? Is that a bad thing? Uh, I would say it's probably negative, depending on the people that you're surrounding yourself with. It might be negative for them. Arrogance is high confidence and low competence. Yeah, it would confidence. be, it would be, it would be arrogant of somebody who has never podcasted to tell me that, to tell me how to podcast. They're, yeah. they're very high in their confidence to give feedback, but their competence in podcasting is non-existent. Just like I shouldn't be telling somebody how to, how to parent. Never done it. I have two cats. Right. I can tell you how to be a cat dad. But other than that, I'm not going to be, you know, I'm not going to be that good. So, okay, that's arrogance. But like we were saying, what's the opposite of arrogance? The opposite of arrogance is high competence, low competence. Yeah. And that's but why people get stuck there. So it goes back to what you're saying, having the proper information, because arrogance yeah. means you don't have the information, you don't have the capabilities, yeah. you're not competent, yet you act like you are. Yeah. Ceiling and floor. Yeah. I'm somebody, I need to know what the ceiling is, and I need to know what the floor is in whatever yeah. I'm doing, because it just helps me be more accurate. I was in the gym, and I was benching 225, and I was like, I am so weak. Yeah. Like, how many, and then I said, let me Google it. How many people can actually bench 225 pounds? It's like, Not me. <laughs> it's maybe 1%, right? Maybe 1%. Yeah. What did that do? Raise my confidence. Yeah. It raised Info my confidence. The information. Information. Yeah. yeah. I love that. So tell us more about your uh, coaching program, Next Level University. So Next Level University is not only the podcast, right? That's the podcast name, but under that, we try to have an opportunity for everybody wherever they are at their point in the journey, right? So whether you have money and you want to invest in coaching, cool. If you don't, we have a Facebook group and we do free speeches and we do free events. But at the end of the day, our coaching is designed to help you level up your life through leveling up your love, your health, and your wealth. So we talk about relationships. My business partner and I are both very happily taken. Um, I have a wife, he has a girlfriend. We talk about wealth. Obviously, we're a business, so we're focused on making more money and how do you actually do that? How do you save money? How do you invest money? All of that. And then we're focused on health, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. So my goal is really to be a peak performance coach for all of those. And I'm very blessed because that makes me learn every single day. So in a way, I get paid to learn, which is great. But most of our clients are emotionally driven humans who want more positive relationships, they want to be more confident, and they really want more direction out of life. And they want somebody who can help them find that. That's usually what we find is our our clients. I love that. And, you know, that's the big concept of our pro podcast here, Life Pro Podcast. Mm -hmm. You know, I like to say everything in life comes with a manual except for life itself. <laughs> yep. And we are, you know, simply trying to teach the world and provide the information so we can build that confidence in in making the right decisions to move forward in life. Uh, that being said, you know, one thing that I ask all my guests is what, what is one thing you want to teach the world? If you could pick one thing, what would that be? I would teach that self-worth is probably the bottleneck. It's I was on a call with two wonderful humans yesterday. And every time I talk to them, they're like, oh, we can't find any clients. We can't find any clients. Nobody, you know, we can't find any. And we got to the root of it yesterday. This person has very, very low self-worth. They have high self-belief. They mm -hmm. believe they can do it, but they don't think they're worthy of it. And those are that's just a very, very challenging place to be. Externally, you believe you can build the castle. I believe I can find the bricks and source the material, and I'm going to build this castle in the ocean. But when you build it, you say to yourself, I don't deserve to live there, though. I'm not worthy of living there. I don't deserve yeah. to live inside of that thing. 
confidence is great and it's it's important to have self-worth is also important to have so yeah i like talking about self-worth as well that's awesome and obviously you know we we talked about information uh and i we get that through books and there, there's i've had a lot of books that have had a huge impact on my life mm -hmm. is there is there a book that you've read that really changed the traje trajectory of your life and really helped you see things more clearly I would have to use this one just based on what we talked about. Mindset by Carol Dweck, a wonderful book about fixed mindset versus growth mindset. Fixed mindset is somebody who probably lacks confidence. Growth mindset is probably who somebody uh, probably is somebody who has confidence and is kind of compounding that. So that is a book I recommend to everybody. Even if you've read it, it's always good to go back and it helps you connect dots. Awesome. I love that. And my last question to you, how, how can people follow you or get in touch with you? I always just send people to the podcast. You're going to learn very quickly whether you like us or you don't. So just search Next Level University. We're on all the podcast platforms. We're on YouTube. And my email, if you want to message me, is kevin at nextleveluniverse.com. I do my own email. So happy to answer any questions about anything you got. Kevin, I've enjoyed our time. You're you're amazing what you do. You're an inspiration to me. And obviously, you know, you're a confident guy. So uh, <laughs> at least- I don't know. I at least you come on off TV. as it. Yeah, yeah I, pre <laughs> I, I appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. you having me. And uh, it was truly a pleasure, my friend. Awesome. This was a lot of fun. I know a lot of people will take a lot of value out of what we talked about. And hopefully we helped affect some lives and uh, remind everybody to like, follow, and share. Help us spread the word. Take care, Kevin. You too.